Welcome to The Exclusive. I'm your host, Sharon Tharp. I'm super excited for my guest today. We've been trying to do this for a while, but you know, when Big Brother ends Thanksgiving and then they go right into Reindeer Games, I just, it's just too much. But I'm super excited you guys are here today. So I'd like to introduce America Lopez and Corey Wartenberger. How are you guys? Hello. Good. All right. How are you? You doing good? Very good. I'm, I'm good. I'm super excited. Like you said, yeah. it's been a long time. We've been, I know we've been like DMing for a while back and forth and <laughs> I'm so glad it's finally happening. Me too. I'm, I'm sure people for it, for it too. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure people think this is like a convenient thing, but me and America have been talking about this for a while. Um, mm. Also forgive my voice because uh, I'm getting over a sickness. So listeners, I'm sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, catch us up. Um, I know people who follow you on social media, probably watch your every move, but for the people that don't and kind of in the off season, you know, check out a little bit. Corey, you went back to school, I think in Nashville, America, mm. you moved like how things, how are things going with that? Well, I'm, I'm back to the student life, uh, which is weird because you go on, it's such a crazy experience like this. And then it's back to like in the classroom taking notes. America's like, we should watch a movie. I'm like, I have to do my readings. So, you know, oh, it, it's been a weird transitioning back because I feel like I was done with it, but I'm, I'm just not. So I'm in final season right now. Uh, so that's, that's basically where I'm at. But I think the bigger change is probably America. Uh, yeah, definitely. The moving across the so country. we moved. We were in Jury, and we were talking about how we were going to do the long distance thing. It hadn't really occurred to me, mm. like, oh, Nashville—that's a city. I can live there. <laughs> it wasn't until like we left and you went to Florida, and I went back to Texas that I was like, why are we going to do long distance? Like, what am I doing at home? You know, yeah. like, um, and I'm not going to move back to New York. It's so expensive there. I'm like, let me move to Nashville. I've never been to Nashville before. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I moved here first week of January. I've been here like three months. Uh, it's cute. I like it. I wish it were more walkable. Moving okay. from uh, New York, obviously, I'm like, oh, there's so many cars and everyone drives to like move just a mile, right? I'm not used to that, but mm-hmm. it, it's it's going pretty well. I did get hit by a car like a month ago. Uh, so that was my what? thing. <laughs> After I got hit, I was like, oh, this wouldn't happen in New York. Like people actually respect pedestrians there. Like. Anyway, it was just a little bump. Um, I didn't even bruise. It was okay. Probably a casual. Oh my god! Well, I'm happy you're okay. Jesus. Yeah, I was like, oh, we joked around, like, oh, it was Riley. Uh, but she was walking. She was walking to Whole Foods. Then she calls me, like, I just got hit by a car. I'm like, oh my god, should I come? She's like, no, I'm, I'm still gonna go to Whole Foods. I'm like, okay. I was like, no, I need wine. It's Bachelor Monday. Like, yeah. what do you there mean? You <laughs> yeah, I don't need a doctor. I need wine. Um, yeah. I have to imagine, like, if you're walking down the street and you see one of you, you're like, oh, that kind of looks like the guy from Big Brother. But the two of you, I have to assume people, like, recognize you. What are those interactions usually like? Wait, OMG. So you totally just reminded me. We were actually, like, walking back from, like, the Gulch, right? Anyway, we're walking back. um, And somebody, we're crossing the street. This car stops. We keep walking. That same car does a U-turn, turns around rolls down their window and is like, oh my God, Corey, America, can I please like, can we pull over into this parking lot and can I take a picture with you? That was like the wildest thing ever, but that was like, it was so random. It, it's such a spectrum. Cause like, okay, so it's me by myself, I'm not gonna get recognized that much. Same with America by herself. Both of us together happens a lot more. Both of us together with Jag, yeah. oh. everyone has <laughs> seen Big Brother all of a sudden. People were like in my, in my building, we're like, oh, I saw you on the ring, on my ring doorbell. Uh, I was like, what? <laughs> so creepy. Yeah. The, um, I think the, the funniest times it happens is like, one, they recognize one of us, but not the other. And we've come to the conclusion now that we don't like talk about the other one. Well, it never happens to you. It's always to me where like they'll recognize what? Corey and I'm there and they won't say anything. And the first time this happened, I was like, okay, I'm not going to say anything. That's weird. If I'm like, you know, I'm and I'm his girlfriend. I was also on the show. So I didn't say anything. Better, actually. And at the end, Corey's like, oh, she was also on the show. It was so embarrassing because the guy had no clue. Just like, well, what? <laughs> my favorite version is they don't, they know us from the show, but they don't know who we are. They'll be big brother. Like, they don't know your names. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're like, who are you rooting for? And you know who they said. So like, <laughs> yeah, here in Nashville, you know, but uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's gonna be weird. so weird, though. Like, it, I don't know, just being like a normal person and then coming out of TV, a TV show and being like, whoa, this is bizarre. It was um, so strange. <laughs> and it was so overwhelming at first. I remember that weekend after finale, we're headed to the mall. because I was like, I just want to feel like normal, right? We had yeah. been like partying the night before at Todrick's and stuff. And people had been like pulling us in every direction. I was like, let's go to the mall. I Allegedly. want peace. Uh, 
What? Not the Todricks. Oh, but uh, we- At the state of California's. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, so we're at the mall and um, that's when, what was I, where was I going with that? Well, we got I, a phone, we got, so we're just hanging out. We're trying to like lay low. Be normal. We, we get, she gets a text from Taylor, <laughs> Taylor Hale. Uh, being like, hey, me and Joseph want to hang out with you guys. So, like, we're like, all right, well, there goes our nice day. It's time to live our dreams, I guess. <laughs> um, so we're hanging out with them at the mall. This, like, eight-year-old girl runs up to us. First person to, like, recognize us since the show. She goes, are you guys still together? We're like, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. But I think we learned a lot from them, from seeing Joseph and Taylor interact with the fans. Yeah, because that hadn't happened to us at all since mm. finale. So we're there, and I'm learning from them, and I'm like, oh, like now, like I think of them whenever I'm like, you know, I picked yeah. up like I'm like, oh, ask for their name and ask what they're doing, and like I don't know, because <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of shy, and I yeah. mean, you are kind of too. Sorry, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, well, also like, you know, you have you come out, you have this support system that you have this crazy fan base, which is great, I'm sure, but also, and Taylor and Joseph have dealt with this too. But like, do you mm. feel pressure? Because so many people are invested in your relationship. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it's uh, it, like when you're like a showman, I think the fan base is very different. It's much more passionate. And that has the pros and cons of like pros. They might be more supportive and they'll like stick with you for a long time. And they're very loud on social media. Uh, but, but the downside is they want to know everything. Right. Yep. And I think America and I. And I'm like. You we're, know everything. We're oh, not on the same page with these things. <laughs> I'm very much like, let's keep our private life. Whatever whatever we want to show to them, we can show to them. America just says... I'll be like, text me. I'll tell you everything. <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's not a big deal. <laughs> so a lot of times, like, I'll be on stream or something, and I'll find out that they know something. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, how do you know that we went to TGI Fridays? Like, I didn't... <laughs> this is not what I... They have America's location on their phone. <laughs> yeah. Hon honestly, but... I gave it to them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, listen, we're in April. You guys are still together, obviously. Not a lot of showmances even make it past, you know, I mean, Thanksgiving, but you, your season ended Thanksgiving. But yeah, like, is there a secret? Do you think it just depends on the people? Like, what is it? Do well, you know? what's driving me uh, is the Us Weekly photo shoot that has yet to happen. So <laughs> once that happens, then I feel like, you know, we can break up. But <laughs> yeah, I think I think honestly, what made America and I work as opposed to some other showmances was like America and I like each other. <laughs> uh, yeah it's great in in the house at the house so i think that's a, a big barrier also i think like there's a weird dynamic where fortunately like america and i's supporters have a lot of overlap almost like it's like the venn diagram is just a circle so i think it must be weird if you're in a showman's where like it's like dueling fan bases that probably adds another level of stress whereas me and america are basically going through the same stuff together okay yeah that's that's actually a very good point um and in terms of like the postseason, I've talked to a lot of players about this. You know, some people navigate it fine. Some people have trouble. Like if you could do it again or tell someone, hey, this is what you should do when you get outside the Big Brother house. Like, what does that look like? What's the best way to handle it? You want to take this one first? <laughs> oh, I, I'm like, I'm no expert. I have been, like, <laughs> I've been kind of, you know, crashing uh, every other week online. It's true. Um, so I don't know. If well, I would say block don't mute because i was like a, you should always mute instead of block because you want to give them the satisfaction but then on twitter it pops up this is an account you've muted would you like to see what they said and of course i would like to see what they said <laughs> so i'll click it and it'll obviously be something mean because i've muted that account for a reason so th that'd be one thing um and this is like not even specific to our cast i think like there's a certain pressure with big brother it's like okay you went through this experience with everyone and you should like be a family and whatever i think you should do what's healthy for you right like i think suri is a funny example because she's been on a billion of these shows whereas for all of us it was like our this is our reality tv people and it's like take the relationships you want to take out of it and don't feel the need to like force everything else because i don't know about you sharon but like before the show i didn't have more than five or six close friends <laughs> like yeah. it's and now we have like 16 new people who i'm meeting and spent i'll say 15 um and i'm like spending a lot of time with it's just it's strange so that was like something i was struggling with for a little bit i guess i didn't feel any pressure i came out and i was like well back to my back to my life you know back to my friends <laughs> like let me gossip what happened i was like i missed the feeds this summer tell me what happened uh so yeah in terms of the twitter stuff the online stuff 
mute works for me. I'm not tempted like that. Oh, I am. Uh, I know you are, but I'm. I'm like, I'd rather not know. It'll make me cry. So uh, accounts block me, and then I make a new account to see. You know, it's just so. <laughs> oh my bad. god, it's really bad. Uh, so Twitter's good, and I'm glad because I'm. I was a huge Twitter girly before the show, and I'm venting to you know the doctor as we're about to leave, um, like the the stage, the house. Uh, on finale night and I was like I just want to be able to get on Twitter I'm like I just love Twitter so much and uh it, it wasn't that bad no. it's okay yeah. it just depends I think on your experience what kind of person you are too like if you're more sensitive I, I there's probably a lot of factors but yeah I'm always like maybe take a social media break um yeah it just depends I think but I, I think I'd be like you America I'd be like oh yeah I'm gonna take a social media break and then be all over Twitter like, like, what are people saying about me <laughs> yeah exactly I deleted Twitter last week and I was like what's going on can I like can you scroll for me and just show me the good stuff <laughs> and the problem there is, was like, nothing you're... good <laughs> <laughs> well your algorithm just becomes like because it's weird like before oh. your algorithm's like oh I have a big brother and then maybe like for me it's like basketball now it's just Corey everything <laughs> someone tweets about me I just see for some reason it's so bad uh, so yeah. I think, you know, you gotta just delete the app sometimes, but you'll never be able to escape. Fair. Well, that brings me to my question. Like, have you guys watched the full season back or just clips or I, I'm not, I'm not even sure. I haven't. You've watched like half, right? Well, up of the episodes I watched up until like week six, but mm -hmm. I've consumed like every live feed update, watched every clip. Like I I've listened through the entire season. I feel like I'm the only one from the cast who cared enough to do that because i think for everyone it was like an amazing experience and then you move on with your life and go on to your next opportunities or whatever but like for us we're like the biggest fans on the cast yep. so i went and tried to figure out like everything that happened and everything i screwed up and did well and everything everyone else did well and screwed up so i feel like i i caught up as quickly as i can and i'm still listening to like life up he'll be in the shower and i'll hear i was like what are you listening to he's like basketball and i get closer and i hear like hi some and I was like, what? He's listening to live feed updates from week three? Like, it's, are you kidding me? So right now where I'm at, because uh, I've been going through it again, Cameron just ratted out family style to Izzy. Oh, that's pretty early. So yeah. I keep listening, hoping it'll change. Oh. <laughs> like, I'll win no. the veto this time. Like, <laughs> Oh, my God. Um, well, I love that. That's. I feel like I'd be the same way, to be honest. I would... I'm just like obsessive with that kind of stuff. I, I would be watching everything. Um, is there something specific, good or bad, that you watched or heard about after the show that you were like, damn, that kind of like changes my perspective on things? This is an America question. <laughs> you guys. I'm sure there's a bunch. I was like, oh, damn. So, okay, let's talk about Matt, right? That was a huge, I was so disappointed. I was so sad after finale because he was like a completely different person with us. Yeah. And I remember like in the jury house in passing, Bloob said like a comment like, oh, Matt didn't like you. And it was like, mm. I, I think we were like getting escorted out or something like that. Like we were busy. So I didn't get to ask any more questions about that. And you obviously didn't know about this. Mm -hmm. So like coming out and we're talking to your mom and I'm talking to my friends and they're, I hadn't seen any clips yet, but they're just telling me everything. I was like, oh, that's so disappointing. Right? Like, it's like these personal relationships that I thought I had built. Like, game is one thing. And then I'm like, oh, like, we were talking, like, when we leave the game, we're going to be able to hang out with this person, this person, this person. And, like, yeah, that's going to be our group. These are going to be our people. Whatever. It was all game. And it's like, oh, no. Like, he sucks. Like, it was just, it was sad. It was disappointing. And it was, and it was like. I think it was different with Matt, too. Because, and, like, obviously, there's people in the cast who I don't get along with as well and people who've said some things in the cast i didn't love like obviously like cam and jared said some stuff for sure and i think blue had her moments and, and so did i but like, i think there's levels to these things right um but for like cam and jared like you kind of see it a little bit like some of these like i was in some of those conversations you get the vibe matt like and this is where matt's probably a better player than them i thought matt loved us and i was like oh we're gonna go to the olympics and root for matt and whatnot so oh. it just like caught me off guard i think more than anything else um because again like i think his superpower is when he's in a room with someone he makes them like him right like he's he's gonna say what makes them happy it's just like you know it was all behind our backs which you know it's big brother but the, the yeah i like to see him try to do that to my <laughs> face <laughs> yeah it wasn't uh, it wasn't game stuff either it was like personal which is, that was tough to watch even as a yeah. viewer well, him trying to rewrite history and like say it was game talk like his because the the quote was like your everyone, flaws it was like everyone loves america so i had to i'm like 
who loved America? Like, oh, I like, loved America. I was uh, like, I was a Aww. an option every week. Like, like you could argue I liked her, Jag <laughs> liked her, and Bowie liked her, and everyone else was anti America. So Matt, you know, I, I don't, I don't, and also like his main strategy of getting everyone to dislike <laughs> America happened after America was evicted, which is the bigger sticking point to me. Of mm. it's like reverse jury management. I don't know if he was on another level that we were, but it, it didn't well, make sense. Yeah. And speaking of jury management, I remember you were being, you were high on his game for a while until yeah. you started seeing his goodbye messages and sort of how he was handling the jury. Do you have your thoughts changed on that? Are they pretty much the same now? I mean, I'm still high on his game. I think he's a much better player than Jag. Uh, I think he played a good game, but like every time he comes out and does stupid, um, can't curse stupid stuff after the show you can curse i curse every time he comes out of the show and does stupid shit and says stupid shit um i have like less and less faith that any of it was intentional mm. um but like I, I played with him he completely fooled me jag never fooled me felicia never blew it like I, I give him credit for that but like i don't think it's just hard to believe that he was like this genius strategist when i'm hearing him say all this shit well after. clearly not you've heard his final speech we heard it too it's that like was that was I was tough. like on the fence with both of them. Obviously, I'm like, I was like leaning Jack because I'm like, I'm better friends with Jack. I'm just gonna vote for my friend, and he's winning all the comps. And his Matt's goodbye messages suck. Uh, and then after the questions and after the speeches, I was like, okay, well, both of these speeches are bad, but Jack's is kind of funny. <laughs> Matt couldn't make out a sentence of what strategy he actually, you know, worked or what magic he worked in the game that wasn't keeping Jag uh, during the pass to power week. Yeah, it was yeah. it was annoying too because like our questions were framed kind of poorly. We're like told Matt what he was supposed to say. We're like Matt, we all think you're Robin to Jag's Batman. How do you respond? And he responded, "We're actually both Robin." And I'm like, <laughs> "Okay, that doesn't." <laughs> like, okay. Cool. Yeah, I remember watching that in real time. It it was tough to watch. Um, it was so cringy. But like speaking of that, um, Matt, you know, Matt went on a podcast. He had a lot of claims. He said that. He thinks he didn't get your vote because of America. I don't. I don't know. You tell me. Is that true? We did, we talked about a lot of things in the jury house. It wasn't Matt and Jag. Like you know, we we did that during the like he has his own. Corey's a game bot. Hello. We do you were think just... I had any sway in would Corey? Would you also? I didn't know about Matt shit talking me in the house in in the jury house. I had no idea. That's yeah. true. We thought it was gonna be Felicia Bowie in the final too. Um, <laughs> Now, I, I think like for me it was as simple as like i walk into the jury house it's just me and cameron cameron thinks jag is the best player of all time and matt's an idiot he always underestimated matt um and i'm arguing against him i'm saying matt's better then we get the goodbye messages for blue in america and matt says and i know you guys didn't see it which is so annoying because it ended up being so relevant to my vote at least uh where he's saying i you know, had nothing to do with your eviction like i wanted to keep you i'm going with the house jag was hoh i'm only one vote and it just became like this. Um, Both of them were the same. Like me and Blues were the same. Ceres, we also saw Ceres, uh goodbye yeah. messages. We, it was the same. Like, for me, it was just I this was accumulation of things where like, okay, I think he's the best player. Cam thinks he sucks. I don't really take Cam's opinion that seriously. Okay. <laughs> then we get two goodbye messages where Matt's telling us that he's not the best player. Then we get Suri coming saying Jag's the better player, which I actually do value Suri's opinion a bit more, even if I think she was wrong. And then in the final speeches, Jag says he's the best player, and then Matt says Jag's the best player. So, like, I, I think Matt's the better player, but everything was telling me Jag was. So that was mm. my vote. So, yeah. But like, Matt went on this podcast. He had a bunch of things to say. I think he admitted to calling you a bitch, which he said, you know, he said multiple times in the house, among some other gross things. But, um, yeah, just, like, what what... When you're watching this stuff, like, do you think he was baited into saying that? Or is he, like, really believe these things? Because obviously, you know, this happens on reality TV. People come out, revis revisionist history. Oh, I meant to do that. That was my plan all along. Like, what do you what do you take of this? I think Matt's a crowd pleaser. And he was in a room with two guys who, like, I know Zach from Challenge. I'm not a big fan. The other guy, I have no idea who he is. But I'm not a big fan, shockingly, too. And I think he's just trying to impress them. But I think his actions in the house towards not just America, also Riley and the way he talked about it and some of the podcasts he listened to, it just paints a very clear picture to me about. I think he's dumb. He's I, just dumb. Well, I think he's... Like, it's one thing yeah. to think these things. And then it's one thing to go on a podcast six months after and like, like say them again, double down on everything. I mean, instead he, of being like, oh, that wasn't cool. But like you said, he's a proud people pleaser. That's how we saw him play the game. It was always just you know, going along with people and avoiding blame. Um, and that's how he is up 
outside that. Well, I think he honestly wanted the two dudes to think he was cool. <laughs> Like, I don't think he was thinking beyond, like, oh, people are going to see this. Yeah, but I think those are his thoughts. Oh, yeah. It's not like sure. in the house, like, he was like, oh, like, in the house, he's like, I hate hookup culture. I, I never hook up, you know? And, oh, I hate girls that do. And I'm like, shut up. Like. Yeah, he doesn't like brunch either, apparently. And I'm like, what? Oh, hey, Bender King. That was his nickname. Yeah, you don't like brunch, I'm sure. Didn't he say he was like something in the house about like, this is the longest I haven't had a hangover. So I'm like, you really can't be judging Riley for drinking, but okay. <laughs> that was yeah, you know, girls who brunch. I was like, oh, I, I, I haven't watched like a, an entire clip because it just hurts my ears. Like seeing them all like, yeah, high five each other. Like <laughs> women suck. I'm like, oh, shut up. This is so annoying. Yeah, I think, listen, a couple things could be true. Did... Matt like Riley more in the house than she liked him probably did he did she like him more than her outside the house maybe it just seems like why are you gonna go and say she's you know chasing clout and she turned into a stage five click like these are like kind of gross things to say and yeah I just um I tried yeah I checked on Riley I hope she's doing okay but this man had like a q-tip shrine to her which I think America you got blamed for messing up too oh. um <laughs> I, thought, okay, I, it, I thought it was stupid Izzy messed it up I think I might have cleared the tape because it was taking up space we only have so much counter space there's so many girls doing their makeup are you kidding me that and the stupid ass pineapple I remember being like this is the lamest shit ever like who is like he's like oh it's me and Riley's baby me and Riley's baby after she's gone like and then they like revived it or something like that like yeah, and it, it came back as a watermelon and I was like oh come on like how stupid. Like, he was all over. And to be fair, you know, when he's like, oh, I didn't know what blonde that was with my mom. Oh, yeah, because he talked about, like, three different blondes in the house. So maybe he was a little confused when he saw the HOH picture. But it's like, he can't, regardless of, like, who ended, you know, their relationship or whatever they had after the show. Like, it's just, it's gross. It, it like, to do that. Yeah. And it's not, it's mean. It's well, not nice. Like, and and it's, it's just funny, like, the idea that by the time he got the letter, he's like, what is she doing? Because I was getting screwed over by like week nine because <laughs> Riley told him to trust Suri and not court. Like he That's took right. Riley's, like, <laughs> Riley's promise. He wanted to name the Alliance. So yeah. like, look, I, I think he, he knew her for 16 days. Riley also knew him for 16 days. I'm sure she was contacted to write the letter. It's not her breaking. I was going to say test. production was involved. Come on. A hundred percent. A thousand percent. Like, she's not like. So like we saw her reaction when he said that he had a crush on her. Sorry. Aww, Matt, Maddie, Maddie. <laughs> like, yeah, it's pretty good. I know. Um, so I t I know you tweeted this, America, but like after the show, he contacted Corey, but never contacted you. Or what was? Have you had conversations with him? No. After the show, I was like, okay, well, I don't want to associate with him. You know, I'm not going to follow him on anything. Yeah. I'm not going to reach out because that's weird. Like, reach out and you said these things. It makes me mad. Whatever. I'm like done with him. He, you sent him a present. Yeah. So I was, uh, it was Christmas and I sent everyone from the cast a present. I was oh, like, I don't want to cause drama. Let's just send him a whatever thing. And uh, he responded, thank you. I, I, I appreciate you. I know I said some mean stuff about you and America in the house. I'm sure she doesn't want to talk to me, but blah, blah, blah. And I responded like, I think she'd appreciate an apology if you were, you know, if you, if you wanted to call her, I think she'd appreciate it. And then it was just silence. But that was, that was that situation. Oh, that's sad because you kind of set him up for success there. Yeah, and it's not like I'm trying to play both sides. Be like, right, Eric, isn't it nice of Matt that he apologized? I'm like, it was just like he was saying, like, I'm sure she doesn't want to hear from me. I'm like, well, you shouldn't be sure about that. That doesn't make any sense. Like, the, the I think the problem was immediately after the show, we had like one or two like event, like Todrick's the day of, and then like we went to Blue's mom's restaurant after that. Um, and Matt like ran up to us because I assume a lot of his exit press, maybe you have some insight in this, was like, hey, why were you horribly mean to America? Yeah, I asked um, we hadn't heard anything. No, like we like my mom and brother were like, Matt was didn't really like you guys. And that was kind of the extent of it. So he comes up and apologizes and we're like, OK, I mean, you know, it's it's a game. No, you, said, you were like, it's OK, it's a game. I caught in. I remember this. And I was like, no, we're I was like, I don't know what you said. We're all a little drunk right now. I heard that you said that I didn't cook her clean. What's that about? And he was like, oh, well, I was a little hungry. It was week three and I was hungry. Was hungry? It was me and, yeah, because he's like, we were have nots together and it was only me and Red doing the cooking. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I said, we're, I was like, you're drunk. I didn't drink that night, but I was like, I was like, you're drunk. We'll talk about this when we're sober. 
And then he tried again coming up uh, when we were at Blue's Mom's restaurant. Uh, and again, he's like, we're all drinking. And at this point, I'm drunk too. And I was like, yeah. we're ta- we'll talk about this later. Like, don't try to talk to, to me. So I think he now. feels like he apologized. And and that like, was probably it, you could argue like, he apologized to me never to America. Like that. But also, mm-hmm. like, I'm not the one who needs an apology. <laughs> like, yeah. What he said about I, me was very whatever. And it was fine. It was whatever. I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to go and like shit on him online, right? Like, it's been so long. You know, I, it doesn't help. Anyone. It doesn't help anyone. I have my own feelings about him and other people in the cast that said whatever. I can keep those to myself. But then he did this podcast, and I was like, you know what? I'm glad you brought it up because I could die to talk about this for a hot minute. <laughs> yeah, but, he also said some stuff about Heisem and wanting ugh, like. Was that most offensive part of all? He could not be Heisman in a single competition. No he, shot. Was he claiming that he like threw them? Like I'm very confused. What he was claiming like, that like Heisman wanted to get rid of Matt because Heisman knew Matt was a threat to Heisman. Yes, threatened. Which is like uh-huh. there was no, a Jag set the comp record and Jag was not a threat to Heisman in these competitions. Like, yeah, it's <laughs> fair. <laughs> well, speaking of Jag, he put out a statement. Um, he obviously doesn't condone what Matt said. How is your relationship with Jag and where do Matt and Jag stand? I don't think, at least from what I've heard, they're not the best on the best terms. I don't know. They did the, what was it? The Minutemen World Tour after finale. And then we don't really, whenever we've seen Jag, we don't talk to him about that stuff. Because I'm like, okay, okay, you can hang out with whoever you want to hang out with. Yeah. That's not my business to like come in and be like, you can't hang out with this person. I don't like that. Whatever. Like he knows what's going on. He's not oblivious. He's also online and saw the stuff that was said. And I texted, well, and I told him, I was like, you were in the room when this stuff happened. So why are you shocked? Or why is anybody who was in the room laughing, hee hee hawing with him when he was saying these comments shocked? It's not like Matt was in an empty room just talking to himself. Yeah, I think the optimistic way of looking at it, which I don't know if I necessarily believe this, is like, no one has gone back and looked at clips and looked at the feeds except for us two and maybe like Izzy when she was out of the house. So like- I'm sure. And I know like Mimi's on Twitter too. Whoever's on Twitter knows, right? Yeah. I see a lot of clips on Instagram, but like I see so many clips on Twitter and that I went back and my friend sent me a bunch of stuff. And like, we were like, Jack, you haven't seen um, Izzy's like infamous. I'm gonna fuck them. It's so good. He's, he's like, what are you talking about? He, when he came a few weeks ago, like we were showing stuff to him. Cause I was like, this is so, this is classic Izzy. This is so good. Uh, yeah, but I, you know, I, I like Jag. I, you know, whenever he's in Nashville, we'll, we'll hang out and party. But um, yeah, Matt, I, I think that's, I, I don't yeah. even know the answer right now. <laughs> I know. I was going to ask you, is there anything that Matt could say or do at this point to sort of like come back from this because he's pissed off a lot of people and hurt a lot of people which again I don't know I think part of it's probably his true feelings and then part of it you know I don't know like you said maybe he was trying to like he didn't think anyone see it I don't know but like is there anything that he could say or do do you think I I think I mean in terms of like I think he should just probably like fade out and maybe you know if, if he wants if he's interested in doing more tv just definitely don't go on more podcasts and if he's interested in going to the olympics just train for the olympics like i think ultimately matt whenever he is given a microphone is either a gonna try to people please or b be himself and both will cause problems mm-hmm. um which, which sounds harsh but like this podcast is crazy <laughs> Um, it, so yeah. like more clips kept being added onto Twitter. And I was like, what? Like, you would think he would have stopped after like the Riley stuff. Right. Or like, yeah. I felt like one Riley clip and I was like, oh, this is bad. And then there's like five other like minutes of him just talking about Riley and like clingy and all this. And I was like, oh, it's my like God. when it, I feel like when it comes to us, it's not like it was a slip up. Like, oh, yeah. Was, well, well I feel like when it comes to us and maybe this is more a question for America. Like I'm just, I'm done. I think, I think it's like, I don't have any reason to interact with Matt in the future. If he apologizes, that's great. If he doesn't, that's great. It doesn't, it's just, you know, like I've, n- there's no reason to put in effort there. It's, it's, it is what it is. Yeah. I don't think we'll go vacation in that no. room any, anytime soon. So I think we're no. Mm-hmm. Well, Riley, Riley lives in um, Nashville. Have you guys talked to her at all? Is she doing okay? I, hope. I had lunch with her a couple of days ago. So it was after all the podcast stuff. Um, and, you know, I mean, she, she didn't love it obviously of course. um but i think what just upset her is like she feels like she's been the bigger person the whole time like not said anything not done anything and then he comes out of nowhere with all this stuff and she's like okay well do i continue being the bigger person 
or say everything I want to say. And I think the problem is if you or like say it, say well, it. the problem is if you're honest and you tweet out like America did or go I'm on like, podcast. You can borrow my Twitter and you can tweet from my account if you don't have Twitter. Like, get it out, girl. The problem is you're going to get a lot of people being like, yes, queen. And then a lot of people being like, yeah, but you are a slut right because you're gonna have all those people come out of the woodwork so yeah it just depends on like lose, how much lose. you can manage and what you want to do yeah i reached out to her but i totally understand if she doesn't because to be honest like sometimes yeah just not saying anything maybe being the bigger person is better but um but yeah i, I just was like worried about her um because that was a that was a rough rough listen um <laughs> and also like i think you know what is the the most important thing here is like what does bowie jane think about all this <laughs> Do we know? Bowie James Do know? just doesn't want to surrender. You know? Yeah. <laughs> That's oh Bowie's stance. Oh um, bring Bowie back. She's the only one. <laughs> we'll have oh. a clean up late. They did bring her back. Wasn't she the snowman? DJ Scroogey. DJ Scroogey uh, on Ranger Games. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. Her new single, home. stream it. It's amazing. Never Surrender Club Mix is the one we're trying to blow up. But yes, yeah. we're trying to push oh, that. I'll, I'll go download it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know if you guys wanted to touch on just, like, Cameron or Jared. Like, is it the same sort of thing where, like, y- like you're cordial, but you don't need to be best friends? Or Because, I, I, again, I'm, like, completely removed from what's going on. I know the fans probably know, but. Oh, my God. So I got super drunk a few weeks ago. Yeah, I saw your deleted tweet. <laughs> Someone sent it to me. Again, I don't know, but then people send me things. Absolutely just uh, blackout. <laughs> I tweeted this and I guess, you know, tweeted deleted because I guess I, I was there enough to be like, oh, not a good idea, but I not good enough to be like, you shouldn't type this out or tweet it in the first place. So that was a mess. That was so embarrassed. I like woke up that morning and I remembered that I don't remember. I didn't remember what I tweeted or anything, but I remember the gist of it. And I was like, okay, let me delete Twitter, delete everything. I didn't even see any of the reactions, anything. I'm like, I just want to remove myself from everything. It's so, I was so embarrassed because it's different if I tweet sober, something that I feel, but if I'm tweeting drunk, that's so messy and like unnecessary. And Jared's been nice. Like Jared's been fine. You know, he apologized uh, at the finale and I was like, you know, we're good. We like, we had a conversation that was fine. So I was like, oh, it's so icky and so gross for me to like bring it up. Right. I was like, that's so immature. Uh, so it took a few a few days. I I did reach out to him and apologize, and I was like, I'm so sorry. Like I shouldn't be bringing stuff up, you know. That's how you handle it, though, America. You apologize. You know, it happens. Well, I felt so much better afterwards because I was literally yeah. like so anxious. I was like, please, like Earth, like swallow me whole for like a, a week. And then I I apologized to him, and I was like, ah, oh, like I I feel better. And he was very nice about it too, mm-hmm. uh, which, which is nice because uh, I was like, oh, like. I started a bunch of shit for no reason. So yeah, and um, I think as far as Cameron's concerned, there was some stuff in like the house and the jury house that I really didn't like after the show. Since Reindeer Games, haven't heard from him. Don't care to. I don't think he cares to hear from either of us. I think we're just completely on different worlds right now, and that's probably best for everyone. I hope him and yeah. Stevie and the rest of the family are doing great. That's that's my yeah. diplomatic but honest answer uh the only thing i know about him he hated my barbie tweet which i'm like <laughs> yes. laughing like i'm like oh that's so funny yeah america <laughs> america tweeted cam hated the barbie movie and me blue america and cam were in jury watching it and like he definitely said he liked it i don't believe him but like he did like he didn't say he disliked it but america one night just decided <laughs> oh, like, america funny. loves twitter <laughs> yeah i love twitter like it's funny it's harmless he was big mad about that which i'm like whatever he well, loved i'm just ken <laughs> <laughs> it's his favorite song well in more positive news like other than each other who from the cast are you would you say you hang out the most with or, or closest to matt cam and jared <laughs> these are <laughs> our boys um i mean jag was here uh he was in nashville for like a week we went to broadway basically every day to riley's bar <laughs> which oh nice was, like, not a good of us as hosts we just kept taking the same place um i there's nothing you can do to make me dislike bowie she's amazing is she um i i love bowie uh, i was there for her single and release party oh on God. tiktok she was on tiktok it was like it was like she's dropping it live and i'm just one of the boxes like jamming out um <laughs> and then uh i really like izzy for sure i think we just we're on the same wavelength in the game and outside the game and like if suri and jared are not there I think we obviously would have 
been like working together super, super closely. Um, but outside of that, like I, I'm, I'm back to my normal friends in America and like, there's nothing like I, I'm not beefing with Kirsten, but like we, we haven't chatted. Uh, yeah. But, my girl. Yeah. My final two. No, uh, for me, it's probably just Jag. Okay. But yeah, I'm like, I, I mean, I have Corey. And it's nice, you know, to be able to go through this together, this transition. Uh, yeah, at least you have each other. We talk about like Big Brother, like every day it'll pop up somehow. And it's not like, you know, either of us are annoyed by it or mm -hmm. concerned. I'm like, if this is a huge thing for both of us, I have my BB comic on the wall. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I have my BB comic. I was in a, uh, in an eBay um, auction. auction last year uh, around this time, like, March, uh, February for Joseph's BB comic. Uh, <laughs> this huge Joseph, Jailer, Taylor stand. And I was like, he was selling it on eBay. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. And I was, I was too late. Somebody outbid me. Uh, but I was like, wouldn't it be funny if I had like my BB comic and then like Joseph's <laughs> right. How much was that going for? Like it went for like 400. It's not too bad. Okay. I but know. I was like, I wouldn't have any money at the time, but I was like, okay, 300 will be my cap. <laughs> if I would have seen somebody you know, up to 400, I maybe, maybe would have done like 401, but. I'm just imagining her wall being like, it's, cause we, I look, it's her key, it's her veto chip, her comic, and then just Joseph's comic. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it would be. But you're well, moving you... in soon and his, there's space for your baby comic on that wall. Yeah. Are you moving in? Tell me about this. So Vanderbilt uh, forces you to live on campus all four years. Fortunately, oh. uh, during the summer, that's not the case. So I have to finish up classes this summer, but I'm, finally don't have to pay for a dorm basically um so you know moving in here uh i basically lived here for uh, like three four months but i would like have a place on campus uh so it's gonna be fun you know I, the good thing about me in america is we lived together for 100 days already exactly uh, we shared a room for 20 of those days so like i i don't think it's gonna be as big of an adjustment as most couples probably Totally agree. I mean, I think you guys are going to be fine. You, you went through the Big Brother house, you'll be good. Mm -hmm. um, well, I want to uh, have a couple listener questions. Um, who, like, of alumni that you've met, obviously Taylor and Joseph, but, like, yeah. who else have you met that was, like, pretty cool or you had some good conversation with? Turner's. I, mean, I was going to say Turner. I think Turner is so chill. He's a nice and guy. He's, like, chronically online, too. I feel like, so yeah. if you, like, get all references. When I was talking about, like, one of my first tweets out of the house was about Terrence's from last year, his like prop pop pussy video. And like Turner got it. If anybody <laughs> listening doesn't know what I'm talking about, just look it up on Twitter. Uh, but it's so funny. And like Turner got the reference and I was like, oh, he, and then we had, when we went to Providence, uh, cause I wanted to show Corey around Brown. Uh, we met up with Turner and Michelle from BB10. Uh, okay. And that was super cool because, like, she's talking about her season like it was, like, yesterday. And I'm like, oh, I, I just watched your season, um, you know, to prepare for the show. Uh, but, yeah, Turner and Megan were great. Yeah, we, we met so many people in the days, like, right after um, the show. Like, we met most of the cookout. Uh, all of them were nice. Chata was super sweet. Um, I met Lawan, which was awesome for me. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. I love Lawan. Yeah, I nice love Lawan. Uh, I like was DMing back and forth with Dan, which come on, like I reached out, like come on. Uh, but I that mean, was I, why not? <laughs> that was super cool, and um, I, I tweeted something about like how Jag was a like a better winner than like Ian and Rachel, and then I forgot my platform, so Rachel responded. I was like, <laughs> she was like, "What the hell?" I was so, like, <laughs> "How dare you disrespect Rachel like that?" I'm like, Rachel over Jag any day we could relitigate points, but, uh, so it, everyone's been really great. All the alum, um, that's been like a real highlight. And I think we're going to Chicago soon. So we should meet Andy and Matt Hoffman, Hayden, uh, Andy's on Twitter too. So I'm super excited. Andy's great. Andy, Andy. I'm sure like he's so funny on Twitter. Uh, so I'm very excited yeah. to hang out with him. And, oh, you and one up. more thing, uh, Kevin Jacobs, BB can. Oh, at 10. He's, he, he's a good friend. I love Kevin. So, so sweet. Oh my God. He's been Best so guy. helpful after the show. Uh, yeah. yeah. Love that. Oh, well, yeah. He, obviously, he was friends with Zach too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> but uh, in terms, you brought up Dan, and I'm curious what you thought about Dan's game on traders or just traders in general. Did, I'm assuming you guys watched? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I think traders is a bad 
format. Like the game is not mm. interesting at all. It's basically just you're gonna keep adding creators to make enough episodes. So like, I think the show is flawed, but the cast was amazing. Um, I yep. think Dan didn't do nearly as much wrong as people say. I, I don't think he played perfectly. I don't think he would say that, but like he was in a really tough spot. And I think what people miss about the show is like the traders are not a team. So like when Dan is selling out Phaedra and he is the reason Phaedra got discovered, that has nothing to do with Dan. Like Dan doesn't care about that. They're not a team again. So like, I think it was the right move for Dan to throw Phaedra under the bus. It failed and he was eliminated, but he would have been eliminated anyway. So like, you know, I think the reunion said it all because like everyone was still bitter except for the five people who were on Big Brother Survivor or the challenge. Yep. Uh, yeah. And and who was the other? Oh, Janelle. Um, yeah. And and in general, like Big Brother, so far it's only been two seasons. Haven't they haven't done the best? Do you think it's a Big Brother thing, or do you think it's just a you know it just depends on the person? I feel like they go into the show with already like a what's it called. Uh, like a reputation for being sneaky right as gamers and i don't know i didn't see season one i know who was there cody, cody. um but uh, i don't know what happened Ray there Hilton. and he was, uh, he was found out <laughs> i mean cody kind of got serried which it happens um so like i, I think I i've always thought like Sur big brother is a much more complicated strategic game than survivor i think it's a much harder game but it doesn't necessarily like produce better players and the casting is often like much goofier than survivor is nowadays. It's so, yeah. like on average, the average big brother player I think is much worse than survivor when it gets to like comparing Dan versus Parvati versus Suri versus Tony versus Dr. Will. I think they're all amazing. So like well, mm -hmm. speaking of Dr. Will, I cannot believe that they teased uh, Dr. Will like coming back to TV. I was like, <laughs> yes, Dan and Janelle are going to be there. They're going to like yeah. welcome him. It's going to be so, and then it's like, oh, both of them are gone by that point. Nobody knows who he is. Rochelle was like the biggest reaction. <laughs> yeah. I had to hold that secret for months and I was like, people are going to be so You see sad. everyone tweeting like, oh my God. Sure. Yeah, you should have seen during the round table dr will comes out and it's panic oh. blue is whispering who is that so he's like <laughs> it's so bad We're like sitting across from them like oh my god wait so who knew who he was me and corey cameron knew. and cam hello okay and yeah. may maybe felicia i think felicia picked it up quickly but like yeah blue had blue had no idea suri Suri like I knows the name, obviously yeah did, doesn't suri watch she's watched some big brother but probably i guess not the old stuff I mean, she also, didn't... Will also hasn't played for a... I mean, he comes back every year, though, for the round table. Yeah. I mean, Suri's watched, for sure, because she knew, like, what Otev was, but she oh. also, like, didn't know how double evictions worked. So, like, I think she was, like, mostly absorbed information from, like, probably people she's talked to and, like, just okay. being in the space more than it is, like, she's watching the feeds. Got it. Okay. So, no interest in doing the traders. <laughs> no. I mean, they call you, you say yes. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think Not the show sure. seems... And I think the show's produced super well. The costumes are fun. The host, Alan, the is so good. The way I have to hold him back from skipping through the challenges. Because oh he's God. like, this the is missions so bad. The, the, the missions. But like, so bad. I think the show is incredible. The game is just like, it's like Fun. Big Brother's kind of the opposite. The show is like kind of hit or miss. And then like the game is awesome. Traders is like kind of the opposite to me. Yeah, for Traders, what was fun for me was like seeing all these reality TV people together in a room. I'm like, I don't think they did season one with half the cast being like just civilians it's normal people <laughs> I see that. Like, yeah, that, yeah. that's kind of boring i agree i hope they switch it up for season three i mean they got to do something not not cast wise but yeah game wise yeah. It, it needs improvement um but of course people always ask like well first of all would you guys ever do big brother again oh duh yeah you, I mean, you don't say no it's uh they call me back tomorrow and i do it again another hundred days let's go like i <laughs> It's one of those things where, like, the idea of going back on is, like, nauseating because of how stressful it was. And I didn't deal with it very well in the house. I was kind of withering away. But it was so fun. Like, I think uh, 20 years from now, I'll be looking back on Oh Big yeah, It's, like, the coolest thing I've done. So, yeah, you don't say yes. It'd be awesome. And a listener wants to know, would you guys want to play separate or together? Like, do you think you'd be more successful separate or together? I think if we went together, I would be on the block next to America and get evicted um so that's separate so america I would think do... it, i think it would be fun one and of you would do well I'm... right yeah, I'm like, well i keep my mouth shut this i time. would i would <laughs> want to do separate because like i think i i would do separate <laughs> <laughs> i think america honestly would have a better shot if as a group not because like i'm a master strategist gonna navigate through the game but i will always just be evicted before her in like the brendan yeah. rachel kind you of would thing. be the you would be the brendan she'd be the rachel 
Yes. And, but the thing is, like, Gren didn't sacrifice himself. I'll be campaigning yeah. against her all week. And still go <laughs> home. And still go well, that was, home. Okay. Because he's the guy. This is what's frustrating. So we're both on the block. I'm campaigning hard. America is running up to Matt and Jag being like, fuck you, you're annoying, I hate you. And I'm going up to them like, hey, we can still work together. And all that tells them is like, damn, Corey's trying to play. Well, regardless of what I did, like, I could have gone up to them and been like, I want to quit. I don't want to be here. And they would have been like, it was just, not, she doesn't want to play. Let's evict, he wants to play. Let's evict yeah. Corey. Like, whatever I did, either yeah, you're right. Acted, I, you would have. At that point, it was just competition. Because you were the competition, though. You won one competition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So yeah. Anyways, I, what the hell was the question? <laughs> no, no, no. You, you answer it. You'd answer it. Yeah. But um, in addition to Big Brother, any obviously Zach played Survivor. Any interest in Survivor? The challenge, Amazing Race, Real Housewives of Nashville. I'm still waiting for that to be a thing. Um, um for okay, we are in an apartment and we're not married, <laughs> which is the biggest two problems. I think um, you need like 20 years. I think you got to be like a little right. Like well, we can do like the. I know Netflix did like a 20 somethings in Austin. 20 somethings oh, in Nashville. I think Matt was in that casting process, but anyways, oh. uh, you know that. No, he was. Yeah, he was in that. Um. But I think like Survivor, obviously, super big Survivor fan. We're loving this season. Um, I think Amazing Race. America and I have. America has never seen the show, first of all, and simultaneously thinks we'd be great. No, like we'd win. We, we would. I I would love to do it. Seems like the experience of a lifetime. I think we would flop hard. I think okay. we'd be so bad. Like I I get stressed out like driving to the mall, and that's like in my Honda Civic, and I've driven there a billion times. You give me like stick shift in Mumbai, like I can't, <laughs> I can't do this. I like the self awareness, Corey. That I appreciate that. But that's cause... the thing about America. Like America's like, if I go on the challenge, yeah, I'll just America's like, I'll just beast out. I'm like, no, 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 no. no. We have talked about the challenge. I did not say that. Come on, do not lie. Jared, that's a lie. Jared said that. He said, Jared said, I'm such a winner. I have a winner's mentality. If I went on Jeopardy, <laughs> even if I didn't know the answers, I would still do pretty well. And I'm like, on the challenge, I was like, okay, I know I wouldn't bad. win anything. I'm not super athletic. But at this point, like, You'd be fuck fine. it, I'd be fun. I'd like be a little bit more outspoken than I was on Big Brother. Because Big Brother, I was like, oh, I want to win. I can't be super outspoken or loud because, you know, I, I'll be a target. And um, but the challenge would be like, fuck it, whatever. Like, I don't, I don't care. Yeah, you don't go on the challenge and try to play you know, under the radar. Like, yeah, that, that's not <laughs> Um, another listener asked if you did go back to Big Brother, like, would you change your strategy? Um, America, you just said you might be, well, would you be more outspoken if you went back? I feel like, well, first off, I like didn't talk any game week one. Cause I was like, oh, I don't want to be talking to game to too many people. Cause then they'll check notes and they'll be like, oh, she's talking to everyone. So I was like, oh, no game or like very minimal game. Um, and I think that hurt me obviously. Cause in the end it was like, I was telling people information that was true. Hello, Jag. And he's like, not believing me. Cause he's like, oh, like I never worked with America too closely. And I would, you know, so, uh, yeah, I feel like I'd be a little bit more aggressive in the way that I played. I'd play the same game and just be older. I think like, I was just not, <laughs> I think I played pretty well for a good amount of the season. And then things obviously fell apart. You I, and melatonin would, would have won. That's true. I, you would have like, killed it. I think if I was just older and I think the showman's like helped and hurt, but more so probably hurt my game than America's. So like just going in there as a 26 year old guy with America watching the feeds, I think I'd have a much better <laughs> chance of a, uh, doing well but also like it's kind of hard like i came in everyone thinking i'm the rat schemer i proved that i was the rat schemer and then i come back and everyone would know i'm the rat schemer so felicia's going around telling everybody that you're the rat schemer so. yeah i'm like <laughs> listening through the door and i've got like the funnel like and I, like, you're the keeper. it would be an uphill battle <laughs> for sure that. how is felicia have you talked to her or no? i sent her a mustard seed for christmas and she called me and was Stop. very and it was super super <laughs> sweet it was funny because she thought i was scamming her because I asked her for her address, even though we're in the group chat, too, like she knows. And so she calls me like, who is this? And then I'm like, it's Corey. Are you still with America? And he's like, oh, I'm with her right now. And so we, we talked to her. But... Um, but she has been, she's won social media post game. Oh my God. Oh, right. Felicia's Instagram store. Her Instagram just in the general. Best, cool. The best was the screenshot of a link or something. Yes. <laughs> of, of a word document. Word document. She, you know, she went to the Christina Aguilar concert. Aguilar, yeah. Corey Aguilera. No, but she posts. I'm here at the Christina Aguilar concert. Oh, that's what she posted. Oh, oh, oh. She posted that. I was like, who is? What is she talking about? Yeah. Uh, wow. she, I I hope she's doing great. Oh, like well. 
As we wrap up, you know, Big Brother 26 is coming up. You guys were super fans before the show. Are you going to go back to being super fans? Or are you going to be like, mm, maybe I won't watch the feeds this year? Like, tell me about that. Oh, Any plans? Oh, duh. Any questions about that? I'm like so ready for the feeds. I'm like watching BB Cam right now. Um, and I'm like, oh, this doesn't do it for me. Like, I need to see the, the live feeds. I'm a huge feeder. I need to be on Twitter tweeting about it. And... I'm excited to like watch with a, a different perspective, right? I, I don't know how differently it'll be, but I, I'm super excited. I'm a super fan now. Like, <laughs> Sherry, you reached out. And I was like, oh my God, like it's Sherry. Turn her response Thank to like you. my TikTok. And I was like, oh my God, it's Turn Daddy. Like, I cannot believe it. Uh, so yeah, always a super fan. It's still like super crazy uh, to think that we were like on the show, which is why I haven't seen, I haven't seen any of the episodes yet. It doesn't feel real. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to basically, I was never actually, I always like absorbed the feeds. I was never sitting there with the four cams. Like I would yeah. be on Twitter and then they'd say, oh, this is happening now. And I'd hop on, I'd listen to like live feed updates and whatnot. So like, I'll still be doing my thing with that. I probably will like be on some of them, which is going to be a new experience for sure. Um, be- but, you know, I think like what I'm curious about is, is this going to change the way I talk about the show? Am I going to have more empathy or am I not going to care? I don't know. Um, my, I'm leaning towards probably not caring because now I'm done with being a competitor. I'm a fan again. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. Like, are you going to be Good tweeting point. out like, because I remember during 23, she's tweeting like, Turner, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm in love with Derek X. Joseph's so hot. Like, <laughs> like I don't, I can't imagine during 26. Anyways, what do you think? Well, now, because they're all going to come out and know who you are and it's going to be like awkward. It, I don't know. It'll be a jump scare when America's watching the feeds and they bring up America. Like, what? Oh, what? <laughs> well, they also like, you never know. They could do a flashback to your season of you guys or, you know, it's just got to be such a weird experience. Also being like, well, that room, that's where we slept. I don't know. It's got to be. I don't weird. know if they even have footage of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then one last question someone asked, has the TV experience changed your perspective of what you can and will do in the future at all? Or no. <laughs> Um, yes. Not in terms of mm. I'm going to go full-blown influencer, even though I've gone a little bit more influencer than I expected. Um, but I was, I'm a pretty introverted person, closed off, don't like new experiences. And this was a very big, new, fun experience. So, uh, since then I've been much more like, let's go out and sure, I'll talk on this thing or whatever. So I think for me, just like, very broadly, I'm a much more involved you know, person who does things now. Yeah, I was pretty reserved and like camera shy before the show. It was so hard for me to go through the interview process. I I would like freak out every time, the you know, uh, through the casting process last year. And I feel like being on the show, I'm like, oh, I can do anything now. I like Mm -hmm. got so much more confidence. And like, I was like, well, I did Big Brother. What's stopping me from doing this or that? And I am not doing anything right now. I'm at home decorating my apartment. But it's it's been a lot of fun. I also didn't go into it with the intent of like, oh, I'm going to go be an influencer afterwards. Uh, But if I'm making money off of Instagram. Embrace it. If you can make money, I don't hate on anybody for that. Exactly. I'm like, oh, I'll take it. This is fun. And this is, you know, it's a good time. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys. If you're introverts coming on the podcast, talking with me six months or I don't know, five, whatever months after the season, it's been really fun and I appreciate it. Um, And yeah, for the listeners, obviously, please like and subscribe. I'm going to try to do more podcasts leading up to the season. And yeah, thank you for listening.